My name is Jared Bradley. I'm the president of MVAC Systems, and I am here to show you a demonstration. I'm going to set up the MVAC system and show you how to take a sample and show you how simple it is. First of all, I want to actually show you the, the different components of the MVAC. This is what we call the support equipment case, or SEC. This houses the vacuum pump, the solution delivery system, and this is your durable item. And then the rest of it are consumables. And you need four primary consumables to take a sample and then filter it and concentrate it. So I uh, just want to introduce these really quick to you. Number one, this is the actual MVAC. Uh, you can see, the, and I'll, I'll open this up for you in just a minute. Um, that's the actual collection device. Then we have the solution. This is a, um, it's mostly water, but it's got a little phosphate buffer in it, but this is very similar to what you would put on a, on a swab to take a, a DNA sample with a swab. And then this is what we call the extension tubing. This extension tubing can go from five feet all the way to 60 feet, but typically a five footer or a 10 footer is what uh, most agencies use the most. And then the last thing is a filter, and this is a 0.45 micron filter, and this is uh, how we concentrate the sample after, after it's all taken. So uh, in a nutshell, the MVAC is just like a, a carpet cleaner. It sprays a sterile solution down and vacuums up the DNA. So we're going to be showing you uh, really quickly on a couple of different items how that would work um, and once I get it set up. So first thing I need to do is obviously I have my PPB on. Depending on the circumstances, I might even be wearing a lab coat, but I think at a very minimum, we're going to want to be gloved and uh, have the arm protectors on it and uh, have a mask over here. Now there's no, there's no set way that the MVAC has to be set up, but uh, pretty much what I do is, uh, you know, whatever supplies I'm grabbing, um, that's what I'll head to first. So I get it ready to receive the supplies. Now this is, it has some overwrapping in it, so it's really uh, uh, protected well. So I'm going to open that up. I'm going to open this door right here. that off. So I'm going to hang this bag. If you've uh, ever been in a hospital and had an IV, this is uh, where we got the, the original idea. I'm going to grab this extension tubing and again this has the same type of over, over wrapping on it. Now this tubing you'll see <clears throat> has two different connectors to it. Uh, one of these connectors is going to go into the solution bag and the other one actually connects it to the uh, to the MVAC, the collection uh, device. One is for the solution line, the smaller line is the solution line, and the larger line is the vacuum line. So uh, we'll show you that in just a second. Hang that there. Now this is a quick connect, it's going to go actually into, um, that's your vacuum port there. So I connect this. Make sure that's all tight. I can close this door. Okay, now um, I have my MVAC. I'm going to open this up. Pull this out. So again, this is the actual collection device. So all of your DNA is going to be contained uh, in, this, in this portion of, of the system. So you have your sampling head. Uh, this is an on-off switch. And this is what uh, comes in connection with the actual evidence. So I'm going to turn that off, place that in a holder. And when I'm uh, starting this up, I want to uh, make sure everything's tight. So I'm going to turn that once, turn it twice, make sure the bottle's tight. And then I can actually place this in the holder. And you want to make sure the blue on blue there. And that all comes out in the training. Uh, we have a one-day training class that uh, you can typically get uh, six or seven people trained out of your department. And again, we'll go over this in detail uh, in the actual training. So during the demo, it's not necessarily that important. But I make all these connections here so that my solution line is connected all the way to the, to the end. And that's it. So we are basically set up now and we're ready to go. So first thing we got to do is power it up. And you hear that little hum. There's a uh, there's a fan in the back that 
basically circulates the air so that you can operate this in really even hot environments, and, uh, but it circulates the air just fine. The solution pressure button is right here. So you're gonna see there's a bag behind the solution bag that presses against it and pushes it against the door. You're gonna see it starting to expand. <clears throat> and as that pressurizes, um, it squeezes the liquid out of the, out of the bag and through the line and down to the evidence. So as soon as this light turns off, we're ready to, ready to go. So I've got several pieces of um, uh, possible evidence here that uh, the MVAC is used on uh, quite frequently. I, I've got a baseball cap, I've got a rock, um, actually it's kind of a brick item, and some different clothing items. So I'll show you first just on this hat. And again, the scenario might be if you just had some touch DNA somewhere on this hat that you wanted to, uh, to collect from. So what you do is you take this sampling head and uh, you're going to turn the vacuum on here. So again, you, the, the solution is controlled here at the, uh, on the, with this on-off switch, but the vacuum pressure you turn on here. So <clears throat> you got the vacuum pressure going, and um, again, it's got some, uh, some little nubs on the end of that to, um, to pre prevent it from uh, sucking down onto the evidence. But the reason this works so well, this system is can collect uh, 40, 50 times more than a swab is because it sprays and vacuums at the same time. Again, just like a carpet cleaner would. So if you wanted to compare it to a carpet cleaner versus a, a broom, for example, and you're trying to clean up a, uh, a stain off of your couch or the stairs, um, obviously you could use a broom, but if the, if the stain is, uh, you know, your kids spilled some Kool-Aid on your couch, once you tried the rag, if the rag couldn't get the, the entire stain up, then you'd have to get something like a carpet cleaner. And that's really the concept behind the MVAC and why it works so well. Again, it sprays in the middle and vacuums along the outside. So uh, if we do it on the actual evidence, you put the sampling head down, you'd find flat, and then you turn, turn the solution on and you just suck away. And you can turn the solution off if there's a little extra liquid, that's no problem. You can just go and just uh, suck it up. Now I'm gonna turn this on here and show you really quickly. You can see through this tubing that it's now, so the solution is going down and then it's sprayed onto the evidence and then it's actually vacuumed up and then it's being collected up through this line and into this bottle. So you can see it's, it's starting to build up in the bottle and that's basically how it works. So once you've um, collected all the areas that you want to, um, now you have your sample, so all your DNA and your liquid is there in that bottle. Uh, that's how I'd use it on the hat. I'll show you here on this brick. You know, you just figure out uh, where you think the person touched it or where you think the, the blood might be or evidence. Um, you know, if it's if it's on a more smooth surface like that, that's great, but even on the rougher surfaces, it may not, it may not um, get a 360 degree contact with it all the time, but it's usually enough that it's plenty to uh, collect the DNA off of the, off of the item. So you see it moving along there. And again, you can see it collecting here. It's going straight into the bottle, turn the liquid off, go back and get extra if you need it, and then just keep going. So we've had lots of cases where um, the, the item, such as this brick, uh, it's either too rough or too porous for a swab or another method to uh, really collect very well off of it, but the MVAC was able to collect uh, plenty of evidence. Uh, one particular case was the Crystal Bezlanowicz case where the victim was bludgeoned to death with a rock and uh, swabbing had yielded less than uh, half of a nanogram. The MVAC actually collected 21 nanograms of DNA off of that rock. And so, uh, and this is exactly how they did it. So they just put the MVAC right on top of the rock and just vacuum away. So it seems simple, but uh, again, that training 
We got lots of hands-on experience. By the end of that training, you'd be able to take this system basically anywhere you needed to and take a good sample. So uh, let me show you another, another item here. Let's say, um, so these, these look like pajamas. We'll lay out just one leg here. Pajamas and uh, underclothing, things like that are pretty common. Uh, a lot of homicides, uh, or rapes turned into homicides. Uh, lots of reasons to be able to collect uh, DNA off of clothing. So again, we put the sampling head onto the clothing. Um, oh, and by the way, um, obviously with new pieces of evidence, we would, we would change this out. So as you can imagine, because of the solution that's going through there, uh, this is all contaminated with DNA. So if I had, uh, if this was a different case, uh, I, would, I would replace the MVAC with uh, a sterile one. You can reuse the tubing and the solution, but the MVAC itself, uh, you need one MVAC per piece, per item that you're, uh, that you're collecting from. So, all right, uh, you put the sampling hand down, turn the solution on. So you can see it's just spraying and collecting right there. So you can see that the nice little um, moist lines there, that's where you've actually collected DNA from. So if my stain is about this big, I'll just gotta do multiple passes. And you can always go back and do what's called a dry pass. So a wet pass would be when we're actually spraying it down. A dry pass would be uh, turn, the, turn the solution off and just applying the vacuum pressure to collect up any remnants of uh, liquid that might still be on the item. Okay, so you've now seen how we, cl how we collect a sample. We've assembled it, um, taken a good sample, and now we have close to 200 milliliters of, of solution. All the DNA is mixed into that solution. So now what do we do with it? Now we have to concentrate it. And the way we do that, so the way we concentrate it is with this um, Nalgene filter. Again, it's a 0.45 micron. There is a, um, there is a filter, the, the exact same format, that's a 0.20, but we found that uh, since most cellular material is uh, larger than a 0.45, um, the, the recoveries have always been really good, even with a 0.45 micron uh, filter. So this is just an off the shelf item that we found out um, works really, really well. And so I'll, I'll just demonstrate this to you. You take this vacuum line off. Well, first of all, we wanna remove the the solution with all the DNA in it. So this is literally liquid gold right here. So this is all your DNA. So we set that aside. Now we can take this vacuum line off. Put the vacuum line right here onto the filter. Take the lid off. Turn the vacuum back on. Now you can see that there's vacuum pressure applied to the filter and so it's, it's literally sucking down on that filter. So now it, 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 it'll speed up the, uh, the filtering process. If this was just a gravity fed, this might take, you know, I, I don't know, all day to do. Um, but with the, uh, with the vacuum pressure applied, it'll go much faster. So you can see it um, pulling through the, the filter there. Periodically, you wanna stop and mix this up again, make sure all the DNA material is suspended and just keep pouring again until it's all pulled through there. But the key reason to show you this is just to sh so that you can see that it doesn't really matter how much liquid you have after the sample. Unless the sample itself is really dirty, the filtering doesn't take very long. And so you get rid of the majority of that, that liquid and so even if you have your, your, full, your total samples a liter, uh, it wouldn't really matter because 
uh, it, can, it can all be filtered through this 0.45 micron filter. All right, that is how you take an MVAC sample. So we just pull this uh, vacuum line off of here, release the pressure, and that is your, all the DNA is gonna be right there on top of that filter right there. So in order for the lab to process that, you just take a, uh, a sterile scalpel and slice it around, uh, slice that filter out of there and put it into like a coin envelope. Most, most agencies will put the drying cap on it, let it sit for 24 hours, cut that filter out, send it to the lab. And they process it pretty much the same way they do a swab. That's how the MVAC works. It's a, it's a simple machine, but it's extremely effective. And uh, like I said, the, the MVAC has been able to collect DNA off of rocks and bricks, all sorts of clothing items. Um, I, I think the oldest um, evidence that's actually produced a good profile has been uh, 53 years old. Um, I, actually, I think uh, 56 years is the new record now. So um, as long as the evidence has been stored properly and hasn't been contaminated, if there's DNA there, the MVAC will get it. So thanks for watching, and if you have any questions, please contact us. Uh, our website is www.m-vac.com, or you can call us at 801-523-3962. Thanks for watching. Look forward to hearing from you.